Hey, MMA fans, welcome back to Carlo Perusa MMA. Today, I am with a special guest. My guest today is making his return to the Dana White Contender Series here in a couple of weeks. He's taking on Michael Aswell. He is Mr. Bogdan Grad. Uh, Bogdan, we're only a couple of weeks out from the fight. You get to go to Vegas again. You get to take on Michael Aswell. You get to try to get your UFC contract. Um What's the mindset like, knowing that you were not too far away from it? Oh, I'm so focused, I'm so sharp, and I'm so excited for this fight. You know, why did you get into mixed martial arts? What did you like about it? How did you start competing? Oh, it was a childhood dream. Actually, when I was seven years old, I watched with my father, um, I watched TV with my father and there were the old school K1 fights with Ernesto Hoos, Mirko Krokop and I told him at seven years of age, I told him, hey dad, one, one day you're going to see me fight there at the, in the TV. And so I grew up in a small village in Romania, so that was there. And at the age of 10, I moved to Austria. And I needed a little, I needed a little bit of time for accommodation. And with 13 and a half, I started training. With 15, I started with karate. And after two years of karate and kickboxing, I did it in, uh, at the same time. I thought, OK, uh, that's not what I really want. I want some, some, some more complete, something more complete. And I watched, I looked around and I found MMA and I knew that the sport for me. You know, when you first started, what was the MMA scene like in Austria? Was a lot of people doing it? Mm, actually, no. There were, there were some uh, old school fighters. Uh, you can imagine like they were in UFC 2003, 2004, 5, those kind of fighters. Real, real brawlers and, and real strong guys and um, strong minds, but not the real technical ones. Mixed martial arts has evolved so much in the last 15, 20 years. You know, you first started competing as an amateur. Uh, it's recorded back to 2014. In that time, so much has changed with the sport. You know, 10, 15 years ago, some people thought this was criminal. They didn't think it was a sport. It wasn't legal everywhere. And of course, now it is. But when you first started competing, do you have any stories of maybe mystery opponents, fighting in unsafe conditions, bad medicals? Do you have anything crazy or wild? Oh, no, bro. That that kind of, of stories I don't have because... I was blessed from the beginning and uh, and got in the way in got got into my way my my coaches so Gerhard and Michael Etlin they are the um, we can say they brought MMA to Austria and they fought 20 years ago in Russia in M1 competition so they were already professionals and they knew what they have to do and. I fought at their organization at Cage Fight Furious that now is uh, with working with UFC Fight Pass. So I didn't experience that, but I had a lot of street brawls by myself. <laughs> you know, you just mentioned your gym a little bit. You come from a very famous gym in Austria, a gym that is uh, world renowned. Um, how did you find your way to that gym? Actually, I, um, I was in a smaller town 14 kilometers from Graz where I live now and where the gym is and trained with a very good friend of mine and we said we trained kickboxing together as I said before and we said okay now it's time for something else and we looked around found this gym and we we drove there together you know, one thing that makes you so exciting is you're a very complete mixed martial artist. You're a guy who can finish opponents with the hands. You can use the takedowns. You can submit people on the map. At what point did you start thinking if you wanted to go to the UFC and you wanted to go far in the sport that you had to be very complete and well-rounded? Uh, mm, I never thought about the, about that like, the, like, like, like that because... 
it was uh, a road full of stones, if I can say it like that. In German, it makes more sense. So it was a hard road. I, I began with kickboxing and karate. Then I went into grappling and did a lot of jiu-jitsu. Six years of my life, I did jiu-jitsu in the beginning of my career. So I was nearly all the time uh, laying on my back and trying to submit people. And 2016, after I saw that at higher level, I can't submit everybody, everybody and I'm going to lose if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm on my back and the guy's on top and he's making some points. It looks better for the judges. And then, then, then I changed and worked a lot of my on my wrestling, and on 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 that way, uh, I trained everything. So I just learned to to um, combine everything better. That's it. You know, so many people watch the UFC in this day and age. Mixed martial arts is so popular. But I think very few people understand what it's like to get to the UFC. There's a lot of sacrifices that have to be made. You know, when you're fighting in the regional scene, you're getting paid, but you're not getting paid millions of dollars yet. You know, you have to, some people have to work full-time jobs just to afford to do the training. They have wives, they have kids, they have to get punched in the face all day. They have to make so much time for this. What motivates you to get through all the sacrifices? Oh, I have to say it one more time. I was and I am so blessed to meet Gerhard and Michael Etl, my coaches, because they are also successful businessmen and they gave me a lot of opportunities to make money, to work uh, and to be able to train. And in the last two and a half years, uh, thank them, I got a lot of sponsors and Thanks to my sponsors, now I can live with that money and focus full on my training. You know, so you're fighting in the Contender Series once again. Uh, you fought in the Contender in 2023. It didn't go your way, but what did you learn from that first experience? So it's something very deep that I learned. Um, I was raised um, with with the idea that as a man, as a powerful man, you you are not allowed to show that you are scared of something or that you have some emotions. Uh, and that was the problem for me because I blocked the reality and I, I talked to myself like, I don't, I'm not scared. I, I don't have any emotions about Contender Series. I'm just gonna go there and knock him out and that's it. But the reality is, as, as soon as the fight started, my, uh, my mind deep down blocked me. And I was just thinking, fuck, okay, should I counter? No, I'm, I'm too slow, should I do this? And I was, at this level, you can't do that. And Tom Nolan knocked me out, that's what it, that was it. And the biggest lesson, was for me to learn that I can, I can allow my, allow myself to to have feeling, to to feel, also to feel uh, to be afraid to accept it. And now I am at that type, at that point that doesn't matter what I feel, I just accept it and I uh, use it for 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 me. You know, following that fight, you were back in action. You should come, Breno Mourinho, and you picked up an amazing highlight victory here. Uh, you won with a flying knee early in the second round. Walk me through that finish. At what point were you in there? Did you think, hey, I can hit him with his knee? Oh, so <clears throat> I, the thing was, I, the big, the big, Difference is now from from the fight at Contender Series. What I learned is, um, I accepted that I can lose the fight. And what happens if I lose the fight? Okay. 
whatever happens, I accept it. And that gave me the freedom to be completely free and to use uh, 100% of my skills. So to talk about the flying knee, I kicked him some calf kicks and I knew that he's going to shoot for the takedown. My coach to told me after the first round, he's going to try to shoot you fastly. I kicked calf kick. I did the same move, faked the calf kick, and I saw his ducking, flying knee, headshot, and we saw what happened. You know, following that victory, did you feel like that was enough to maybe get you a last-minute UFC call or potentially on the contender again? Yes. Um, I, I Not that I feel that I did enough, but I dreamed, and it was... I really wanted it. It was like, okay, maybe UFC is gonna call me now. And I waited, waited, but nothing happened. Then I had the next fight with Kayona Batista, also a very experienced guy. I submitted him after one minute, and then they gave me the opportunity to fight again at Contender Series. Do you remember where you were when you got the phone call for the second time that you were gonna be on the Contender Series? Uh, yes, I was at home and my coach called me and said, Boggy, we have the second chance. And I was really, really happy. But mm, not, not that happy that I can say, wow, I'm back at Contender Series because that doesn't mean so much for me now. I mean, okay, the only thing that means so much is the potential UFC contract. That I'm there at Contender Series once again, it's cool because I can get the contract, but that's it. You know, we don't see a lot of guys getting the chance to fight in Contender Series for the second time. You know, there's guys who win who don't get the contract that don't even get a fight on there again. You know, you, you have a rare opportunity here. Does that really motivate you to go out there to get this contract? Um, no, to be honest, I don't think a lot about this. I'm just thinking about, I, I'm keeping it simple. It's in reality, it's just, uh, and at anatomy, body versus body. And I have to shut down Michael Esper's body. And that's it. I don't think too complicated. Do you believe that fighting mixed martial arts, is it a lot more mental than it is physical? I think it's a combination of both. You can't, you can't uh, compete with, without any of, of those two things. So you're taking on Michael Aswell, a guy who's been uh, picking up a lot of steam, very top-ranked uh, professional fighter here. What do you think of him as an opponent? I think Michael Aswell is a very good uh, MMA fighter. He is very tough. He has a very good conditioning. He has a very, very good boxing. And he's always pressuring and he wants to fight. So he's a tough opponent. He's a very tough opponent, but I think that's my time now. You know, I, I, look, I look like that at, at this fight. He's 23 years of age, I'm 28. I have, my, that's, that's gonna be my 40 MMA fights. I have 39 MMA fights. If I don't get the win now, and if I don't uh, beat him and get the UFC contract, I, I think I'm, I think that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish with that sport. I'm gonna uh, do something else. So I wish Michael Esfel the best. I wish him the best. I know we are fighting for the same dream, for the UFC uh, contract, but he has time. He is 23. He has time. That's my time now. And that's it. Yeah, I think what makes this matchup so appealing to people is the fact that both of you guys fight with such a high pace. You guys like to pressure. You like your opponents to be on their back and you moving forward when you fight them. Um, you know, you there is some experience on your side here. You are five years older. You have more professional contests. 
is the experience you think going to be enough to edge the victory? Mm. Uh, I don't know if the experience the experience would be enough. Mm, the thing is, it's not, in my opinion, it's not just the experience. It's um, it's the the skill set that I have. I have very dangerous kicks very dangerous submissions and ground and pound so i think i'm gonna use that in my favor you know you mentioned after the loss on the contender series the first time you changed your mindset you fight more free you're not scared to lose anymore with yes. that difference of the mindset is that do you think going to result in the positive outcome this uh this time for 100 percent, because um I accept that there is the possibility to lose the fight against Eswell. And if I lose it, okay, nothing changes in my life. I mean, everything is going to change just when I, if I win, if I get a UFC contract, then uh, a lot of things are going to change. If I lose, nothing changes. I have a beautiful family. I have a beautiful fiance that loves me. I have... Uh, great life, I'm healthy, and I can do a lot of things with my life. You know, I, I did a lot of things um, parallel to MMA, and I have a lot of experience in other stuff also. So that's it. I, I accept it. But if I win, there's going to be some changes. So I'm looking forward to this fight. I'm very happy. I enjoy every day. I, it could be my, my last fight camp. So I enjoy it with my heart. I'm so happy and I can't wait to get there to have fun and win. Every day, do you envision Dana White telling you that you got a contract to find the UFC? Yes. Yes. I envision Dana White telling me that. I envision uh, the fight. I envision the result. I envision everything. I think that's a very important uh, point to, to envision and to, uh, if, you, if you are thinking a lot of what you want in this life and do the right steps, you're going you're gonna to get it. Now, what's the ultimate goal for you, Bogdan, in the MMA career? What do you want to accomplish out of this sport? To be honest, I don't think that far. Um, I just want to get a UFC contract. And then we, I'm going to take it step by step. So at first, I have the UFC contract. Okay. Then I have to win. I have to perform there to get the next contract. Then top 15, top 10, top 5, title, whatever. We never know. Maybe I'm going to be a legend someday. And I'm going to be one of the greatest with five title defenses. Everything is possible because as you said and as we know, I am a complete fighter and uh, now as a more major athlete with the right mind and with the fact that I accept that everything can happen and I can lose and I accept it, if I'm free. And if I'm free, I can perform at my fullest. And if I perform at my fullest, I'm a fucking killer. Now, what would it mean for you to be able to represent Austria in the UFC and represent the country on a big scale of competition? Ah, that means a lot. I'm, I, I would be very, very happy to represent Austria at the highest level. And also, I'm uh, when I'm in the UFC, I'm going to use both flags and we're going to represent and fight for Austria. But I, I'm going to have the flag of Austria here and the flag of Romania here. To, to because I'm from there and there are my roots and I respect uh, the people there and yeah but I'm fighting definitely definitely I'm fighting for Austria and then I'm the only athlete fighting for Austria and that's an honor. All right, Bogdan. Last question, my friend. In a perfect world, what is the outcome when you take on Michael Aswell when you make your return to the Dana White Contender Series? First round brawl, I'm bloody, he's bloody, and I knock him out in a spectacular fashion. 
Well, Bogdan, I'm excited to watch this fight, man. I think it's going to be fight of the night. I think it has all the makings to be a wonderful performance. I wish you nothing but the best, my friend. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me tonight. Thank you very much for giving me the platform here. Thank you. You're a real, really cool guy. I like you. Thank you, everybody who is supporting me and who is watching me. Thank you to my sponsors, to my team. And I'm going to give my best to win that fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you the best of luck. That's Bogdan Grad. I'm Carlo Perusa. Stick around, Oof. my friend.